We have all been living in a relatively stable and peaceful geological time in the Grand Solar Maximum. Between the Dalton Minor Grand Solar Minimum of the early 1800s and the Eddy Grand Solar Minimum, which just started in 2019 and is set to last until around 2097, bottoming out between 2030 and 2050. How dare you? How dare you? Greta, the grown-ups need to talk now, so why don't you go run off and play? While we experience horrific smaller disasters, like coastal sinks, avalanches, hurricanes, earthquakes, smaller volcanic eruptions, we have no existential experience of events so large that maps are actually changed due to the appearance or disappearance of well-known land masses. Thus, we need to ask the question, outside of legends, is there any recorded evidence or proof that such things are even possible and have actually happened? On November 1st, 1755, one of the most tremendous earthquakes in modern history occurred. A great sound of thunder was heard underground, and immediately afterward, a violent shock threw down the greater part of the city. In just six minutes, 60,000 people perished. A great concourse of people seeking safety from the quake had ran out onto the new quay, built entirely of solid marble. But suddenly, it sunk down beneath the sea with all of the people on it, and not even one of the dead bodies ever floated back up to the surface. A great number of large and small boats full of people anchored nearby were also swallowed up in the whirlpool. No fragments of these wrecks ever rose again to the surface. The water where the quay went down is now over 600 feet deep. Alexander von Humboldt recorded that a portion of the Earth's surface, four times as great as the size of Europe, was simultaneously shaken by this quake. This quake extended from the Baltic to the West Indies and from Canada to Algiers. 24 miles from Morocco, the ground opened up and swallowed a village of 10,000 inhabitants and then closed up again over them. It is very probable that the center of the convulsion was in the bed of the Atlantic Ocean, either at or near the buried island of Atlantis, and was a successor of the great earth throw that had destroyed and sunk the Atlantean continent. Underwater volcanoes make up 70% of all volcanic activity, and in 1783, about one month before the Lachy Skafta super eruption on the Icelandic mainland, a submarine volcano burst forth in the sea and ejected so much pumice that the sea was covered with it for a distance of 150 miles and ships couldn't sail through. A new island was thrown up, consisting of high cliffs, which was claimed by the Danish king and named Nuu, or the New Island, but before a year it had sunk back into the sea. The Lockheed eight-month super eruption destroyed one-fifth the population of Iceland by fire or water, caused a worldwide atmospheric change, a famine in Europe, and threw out a mass of lava greater than the bulk of Mount Blanc. In 1831, a new island appeared in the Mediterranean near the coast of Sicily, called Graham's Island. It came up during a massive earthquake and a water spout 60 feet high and 800 yards in circumference. Within a month, the island was 200 feet high and three miles in circumference. It soon, however, sunk back beneath the sea. The Canary Islands were once part of the original Empire of Atlantis. On the 1st of September, 1730, the earth split open near Yara or Yaiza on the island of Lanzarote. In a few days, another vent opened and gave out a lava stream which overran several villages. And on September 11th, more lava flowed out 
covering up a village and spilling out with a horrible roar into the sea. These manifestations were accompanied by a storm such as the people of the country had never known before. And these dreadful commotions lasted for five years. The lava thrown out covered one third of the whole island of Lancerota. In the Dalton Grand Solar Minimum, just after the 1812 New Madrid earthquake wiped out five entire states in the Midwestern United States, the fort and village of Sindri, on the eastern arm of the Indus above Luckput, was submerged in 1819 by a giant earthquake. Together with a tract of country 2,000 square miles in extent, that's roughly the size of Texas or Romania. In 1828, Sir A. Burns went into a boat into the ruins of Sindri, where a single remaining Tartarian tower was seen in the midst of a wide expanse of sea. He could behold nothing in the horizon but water, except in one direction. If you follow the Indus River today, no such body of water exists at all. This scene, said Lyle in his Principles of Geography, presents to the imagination a lively picture of the revolutions now in progress on the earth, a waste of waters, where a few years before all was land, and the only land visible consisting of ground uplifted by a recent earthquake. And now, 200 years later, only land. Also, during that same Dalton Grand Solar Minimum in 1815 on the island of Sumbawa, Mount Tambora had a VEI-7 eruption 100 times the size of Mount St. Helens and continued for four months, knocking 1,300 meters of height from the mountaintop, triggering volcanic activity in a 1,000 square mile radius, flooding the town of Tambora permanently under 18 feet of water, producing violent updraft whirlwinds that sucked up men, horses, cattle, and even ripped all of the trees out by the roots and covered the sea with floating timber. It even caused the ground to open up over 300 miles away on the island of Amboina and threw out water and then closed up again. There are dozens more examples to be found in Donnelly's Atlantis, Lyle's Principles of Geology, and other sources. And I'll be the first to admit that much of geological theory has more holes in it than a Minneapolis school bus or a Ukrainian passenger bus. But, if we are to take any of it at face value, stay tuned for part four, the world before oceans, the continents after Atlantis, and the current rising of the Challenger and Connecting Ridge. Bro! Bro. Relax, Moses. We'll get to anti-Semitism and racism in part five. <laughs>